coming up next is Cliff Martin from Northfield Community Composting. Give it up. Awesome. Um, I'm going to speed through stuff for the sake of time. Uh, I'm still like, like wriggling around in awe of the Baltimore folk and that amazing project, bringing together so many aspects of building power and organizing, but also building new systems that are equitable and sustainable for the environment. Amazing work. That's awesome. I everyone else is too. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that. So I'm from Northfield, Minnesota. That is south of the Twin Cities. It's named after a guy named North. It's not north of the cities. Uh, Northfield, Minnesota, it's a rural town, but it's also a college town. We have Carleton and St. Louis College, two private liberal arts colleges. So we're not the same kind of like rural town that most of rural Minnesota is. And that makes a very unique opportunity for us being able to do curbside composting. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So uh, a little bit about me. I grew up um, living in the country, living in the woods, playing in the woods, also reading Ranger Rick comics, uh, the little raccoon you know, environmentalist who taught me to hate SUVs and stuff like that. Uh, but also with the, my, my dad in particular, who's, his parents grew up in the Great Depression, so they were very, you know, it was the, the reuse and uh, recycle, like there was not waste. That was a silly idea. And uh, he, he kind of did that. He didn't necessarily t you know, teach me that, but I was around it all the time. In fact, just last night I was dropping off a load of popcorn. I'm also a sustainable farmer, like part-time. Um, I was dropping off a load of popcorn at my dad's house because I was going to process some of it there. And uh, in this trailer, I had a whole bunch of wood scraps that uh, some other farmers were just going to take to the dump. And my dad is like, wait, what are you doing with all that wood? I'm like, oh, we're just going to throw it away. And he's like, are you kidding me? That's firewood and it's stuff I'm going to make shelves out of. And we unload the entire trailer. And it was just another moment of, for the sake of time, because I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it, I would have just tossed that stuff. But there's my dad swooping in again like, no, this, is, this can be reused. And that's, uh, that like ethic and that culture very much exists. And this is um, getting into some of this, as has been mentioned, that very much exists in the working class. That's not just a like, upper middle class white liberal ethic about environmentalism. Working class people do care about the environment. They do care about reusing and recycling. Sometimes some education needs to be done, but that is very much there in the culture. So starting to talk about you know, equitable solutions and solutions that aren't just accessible to middle class white people. And like, that's good, like, middle class white people totally leading the way on being able to subscribe to composting in Northfield which is awesome. We have the task in front of us of how do we get make that accessible cost-wise to working class people. And that's something we aren't, you know, like we'll cross that when we get there. We need to launch this uh, program first. So I'm gonna get to telling you what that program is. Uh, a little bit more context, you know, we're dealing with climate change. Uh, we're starting to actually see the ramifications of climate change here in the United States. However, people of color in like island nations and many other developing nations have been feeling the impacts of climate change for decades now. Uh, we're starting to hit that a little bit harder here. Um, we're dealing with poverty and we're dealing with food waste. I think it's like a third of all food is wasted or something like that. I don't know the exact uh, statistic. And um, kind of in that context, I see us as in the, being in the United States, having a responsibility to change, to stop the systems that are doing that kind of waste, that kind of inequitable uh, economic situations, uh, destroying the environment, stop those systems, and also build new ones. But as we build them, we need to build them like Timothy is building solar gardens. We can't build them where uh, rich white dudes own them all the time. You know, if we just rebuild a composting uh, business that a rich white dude is the business owner of and he pays some you know, working class people of color to go pick up the compost at minimum wage, that has not changed very much. Uh, that's not the system we want to build. How do we democratize ownership into marginalized communities in particular? That's kind of the conditions and the why of this project in Northfield. So getting into what that looks like or how we go about that, there's a couple practices that we kind of keep in mind for that. Um, first one being uh, for myself, um, I do uh, sustainable farming with a really cool Oregon Northfield. That's really fun. It's a super good thing, food systems. I also do organizing with high school students around social and environmental justice. So like that was an awesome story. We're just getting that kind of stuff rolling here in the Twin Cities and a bit in Northfield. Um, and then the last thing I do is cooperative business development. And that's uh, this compost project falls into each of those in interesting ways on its own. Um, that the practice we use, we kind of refer to as community wealth building. I really encourage you to kind of go online and type in community wealth building or communitywealth.org. It's a set of practices of how do we build a new economy that's actually centered on people and planet and in a way that isn't uh, just a facade of being green, but is like genuinely environmentally sustainable and particularly democratically owned and controlled by the people who are usually at the bottom, marginalized communities in particular. Um, 
finishing up more, more or less. Uh, in rural economies, uh, we, we've had a bunch of great examples of the way that extractive energy and in ex waste systems in uh, urban centers, they get plopped down in the working class neighborhoods, particularly neighborhoods of color. Out in the country, they plop those down everywhere as well, but it's working class white people who, you know, they're more spread out because they're out in the country. They also aren't very organized. They also don't usually have a lot of legal power. They also don't have any money. Uh, that's the conditions we're working with. Part of the conditions we're working with uh, is that rural economies are very land-based. In that land, it's either gonna be energy and usually extraction, like mining or even gravel mining, stuff like that, uh, a bit with energy, um, or, but food especially. So this is kind of the conditions in which we're operating. So in Northfield, bringing all this together for years now, we've been working on how do we start doing curbside compost collection in Northfield? We're a town of about 200,000, that's 5,500 households who get regular garbage and recycling pickup. Well, what we are building, and we finally kind of confirmed it with our trash carrier, uh, just like last week, we've been working on this idea of doing this local business uh, that's gonna do this, that's gonna employ local people, but it's not just a local business. It's gonna have the most green practices it can because we should do that. So you know, we'll pick it up on bicycles and stuff like that. That's awesome, we should do that. However, it's going to be a worker-owned cooperative, and that's a really, really critical aspect of this work. And that's awesome. I'm glad people are familiar with that. That's awesome. This is a democratized workplace. Uh, there's a lot of ways that worker co-ops can come about, but this is that there is not a boss. There's not a singular one owner who then hires everyone else and gives them low wages, or, or that doesn't always have to be exactly like that. This is where the workers democratically own and control the business themselves. That can usually look like the workers of the business, they elect their own board of fellow workers, and those were, the board might hire a manager who is accountable back to the workers, not the other way around. Uh, and that's a really critical aspect of this. So that's, that's what we want to launch in Northfield. We, we've been working on all different aspects of that for year, like three or four years now. We finally got the go ahead. We are going to launch this thing in spring of 2017, which is really exciting. That just got confirmed. Um, the workers in the worker co-op will come from a local, uh, work, like mostly working class youth of color jobs program that also operates in the schools. So that's where we'll be getting our workers from. They're really excited about it, like the program directors. Um, a little quick thing on the worker co-op. A uh, couple other things. So in Northfield, we have a wonderful history of small groups of citizens getting together to do tiny projects, such as we're going to help you build compost bins in your backyard. And like, that's awesome. We should do that. That's good activism. However, what we really want to be targeting with this project is scale and impact which means building power in particular, because we don't want to just have, uh, th the point of this is not our individual choices, right? That's, that's a big thing uh, that has been uh, powerful for me is that Cliff Martin recycling all of his stuff and composting all of his food scraps doesn't actually change everything. It's when Cliff Martin and a billion other people do. And us as individuals, 150 of us, 200 in this room doing that, it, that's a bit more scale, but we need this on the scale of thousands and millions and billions of people. Therefore, we can't just go around, I, or like we decided in Northfield, we don't just wanna encourage people to go have a recycling bin in their backyard. We need to create infrastructure that makes it easy for regular people to start to develop different habits that reduce waste. That's really critical, and therefore we need a business. We need to eventually mandate from the city or from the state government that like you have to compost uh, but to do that and to get people to do that successfully, we have to do years, I mean literally years, like we're gonna do this for the next 10 or 15 years of door to door and tabling, just grassroots education. Here's what you compost, here's why you compost, here's what you compost, here's why you compost. We're gonna have to remind people of this for at least a decade based on kind of how recycling went in the United States on the 70s and 60s. So we're planning on doing all of that. Um, we hope this thing will hit the scale of about nine employees full time, uh, all paid uh, like, up to $25 an hour, I think, so living wages. Uh, we have healthcare like worked into that. Uh, I haven't worked on the business plan a little bit, but we have a whole bunch of things built into the business plan before launching this. We have uh, exciting financing options that won't give, put us in debt to big private banks, but instead uh, we'll take a loan from a democratically owned uh, cooperative loan fund specifically, de um, specifically using its money to uh, produce more businesses like this, green, equitably owned by workers, things like that, which is really exciting. Um, we, we are really lucky in Northfield. We have a bunch of middle class white liberal people who care about the environment who are willing to pay for curbside composting. Uh, that's really good. Most rural cities don't have that. So if you're working in a rural area and want to talk about 
you know, how to get this thing started. We have that advantage that's different from most rural towns, but I'm still love to talk to you about it. Um, I think I'll just throw out there one, two really good sources. One is Institute for Local Self-Reliance. If you're looking to do community scale, but also seriously scaled composting work, they have a really great report uh, called The Growing Local Fertility. We've based a lot of our research on that, and it's just like a, a bunch of case studies of composting projects across the country. The other one is communitywealth.org, or community-wealth.org. It's all about these equitable models of uh, democratic ownership and control by workers in the community for projects like this. Um, I think I covered about everything. I'm probably over time, so thank you very much. Thank you.